Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being sir, sir? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beach wear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. Are you being so I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so What would you like to see? Excuse me. I make the inside leg 30. <laughs> now, what colour of tie did you have in mind? <laughs> but you only bought this wedding gown two days ago. Is there something wrong with it? Well, it's all to me. Oh, the rotten swine. Were you already at the altar? Yes. Oh. Well, as much as I sympathise with you, I'm afraid we couldn't possibly give you a refund for Papa Snickles. Not unless you say so, Mrs Crawford. Oh. But we can give you a credit note, and then if he changes his mind or you get lucky somewhere else, you can come in again. Oh. Oh. Go on, give her the money. I'd have to give my, my commission oh, back. You've got to learn to be hard. <laughs> but I also had this, which was a special nighty for my honeymoon. Oh, it was a special nighty for a honeymoon. You sold her that. Well, I'll give her a refund. <laughs> there. Oh, and this too. Uh, I was going to take it on my honeymoon. <laughs> she was going to take it on a honeymoon. Well, here's your credit note, and here's your refund. And honeymoon books are on the ground floor. Good day, madam. <laughs> well, she certainly saw you coming. What do you mean? Anyone who takes war and peace on their honeymoon doesn't want a special nighty. Thank you, sir, for your custom. There's the tie to go with the walking stick. I hope you're taking notes, Mr. Randall. Mr. Humphrey certainly has a way of persuading people to buy. I am, Mr. Magavitz. Mark you, I, I wouldn't have bought that tie in a month of Sundays. No, not stripes, not for you, Mr. Magavitz, but what about a nice polka dot bow tie? A polka dot bow? For me? Oh, look at that. The years simply fall away. You see, Mr. Randall, he's trying his sales technique on me, but I'm too experienced to fall for it. Oh, well, please yourself, it's the last one, and if you don't want to look distinguished for $10.50... $10.50, those are $6.00. It couldn't possibly be. There must have been a mistake. I mean, look at the hand stitching. I might have this myself. I was in the middle of making up my mind, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm having this. Sale, Mr. Randall. Well done, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Do I get half the commission for selling of that last time? Why should you? Because there was a whole drawer full down there. Mm. You'll go a long way, Mr. Randall. And you can start by hiding this lot round the back there. <laughs> Your receipt, Mr. Mankiewicz. You sure this suits me? Well, not with that shirt. Now, I've got a very nice silk pocket. Don't in even talk to me. I'm trying to save enough money to buy a biscuit with me coffee. Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Mankiewicz, you free? I'm free, Captain Wagstaff. Mr. Mankiewicz. Mr. Mankiewicz. Are you deliberately trying to ignore me, Mr. Mankiewicz? Oh, I'm sorry, Captain Wagstaff, but every time Mr. Humphreys speaks to me, it costs me money. <laughs> I'm afraid we could be about to lose, Mr. Humphreys. Mr. Crabtree here of personnel has some very serious news. Well, it seems that due to an oversight in my department, the application that Mr. Bowen signed for your work permit wasn't sent. The immigration people are looking for you, and they've got wind that you're here. Well, I knew that aftershave was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but does that mean I'm going to be deported? Well, it seems that you've been working here illegally, and the penalty for us all will be very severe if they find you. Well, where's the phone? Oh, we're looking for it, but we've got papers up to the ceiling. It, it could be anywhere. But the point is, Bowen Brothers is going to be in very serious trouble if you're found behind this counter. Well, couldn't we get another form? That would mean telling Mr. Bowen. We'll have to find the one we've got. Yes, and it appears that someone from the Immigration Department is coming here to check on you, so you'll have to hide. We shall, of course, deny all knowledge of Mr. Humphreys. Who's Mr. Humphreys? <laughs> Humphreys? Nails me one that they chucked in that boat and made him row back to England in chains? No. <laughs> Well, I know the Immigration Department has got a job to do, but much as I'd like to be able to help you, I'm afraid I don't recognise the description at all. Well, thank you very much for your cooperation, Mr. Fenwick. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be more helpful. But the man your department is looking for certainly doesn't work here. Mm. 
Look, I'll have a little stroll around, if that's all right with you. Yes, yes, of course. Hope for so. Good day. Man's wear? Uh, it's for you, Captain Wagstaff. <clears throat> Wagstaff here. What? The man from the immigration department is coming down onto the floor. Yes, well, don't worry, Mr. Fenwick. Mr. Cocker of Packing has taken care of the matter. The man you know as Mr. Humphreys no longer looks like the man you know as Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> I hope it works. Oh, well, I found the best way to conceal something is to put it right under someone's nose. Now, that is very true, Captain Wagstar. It was nearly three weeks before I realised you had a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the blood out. <clears throat> Are you being served, sir? No, uh, just looking. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Captain Wagstaff. Will it be all right if Bruce and me gives the department a once over? Yes, but be quick about it. I want you and Bruce off the floor as quickly as possible. <laughs> right, Bruce, let's have you. Right, oh, no, mate! <laughs> There's your sweeper. Mark it. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Welcome. Oh, it's put on. <laughs> well, Bruce. How about you two coming with me and we'll have a tube or two down at the pub and then I'll give you a bang on my wobble board. <laughs> no way, that pub's far too tough for us, Bruce. Much too tough, oh. Bruce. <laughs> oh, she'll be right. You'll be with me. I'll tell you something. Where I come from, if you've got two ears, you're a sissy. <laughs> Just give him a touch up his didgeridoo. Hey, you. Oh, me? Yes, you. Would you mind walking back to that display model? <laughs> and uh, back to the basket again. <laughs> I have reason to believe that you are a Mr. Wilberforce Claiborne Humphreys. Oh, surely not. This man doesn't answer the description you gave us at all. No, sir. But his walk does. <laughs> I want you. They all say that. You'll have to catch me first. <laughs> oh, poor Mr. Humphreys. What an ordeal for him. Mm, took them an hour to catch him. Uh, but one must give him full credit for invention. Now, who else would have tried to jump out of the first floor window with a big golf umbrella dressed as a nun? <laughs> He should have known they don't wear lipstick. <laughs> They've been interrogating him for two hours now. Poor man. Here he comes. Oh, come and sit down and tell us what happened. Oh, what an ordeal. He wouldn't believe the questions they asked. Well, I, I hope you didn't say that we were party to the deception. No, you're all right. I said it was all my fault. Good on your mat. I put a plate over your dinner to keep it hot. Oh, oh thank you. It's probably the last dinner I'll forget. What, what are they going to do? They've given me 48 hours to get out of the country. Oh, no! Oh, dear. We will miss you. Oh, we'll all miss you. Oh. <laughs> Don't, please, you set me off. <laughs> Ladies, please control yourselves. <laughs> What's going on here? I suppose the food's off again. No, it's Mr. Humphreys. He has to leave the country because the immigration says so. Oh, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel better now. <laughs> there, there. Don't upset yourself just because I'm leaving. Here, dry your eyes. Listen, mate, I'm crying because I've got onions in me eyes. <laughs> Sorry, it was a mistake. <laughs> We'll make sure that you don't make it again, mate. Don't you dare! 
there, pick on Mr. Humphreys. Oh. I'll make you eat your own thumbs up. I think I know a way of keeping you here, Mr. Humphreys. After that, I'm not so sure I want to stay. What is it? Well, if Mr. Humphreys married an Australian, they'd have to let him work here to keep her. Oh, that's true. We could have a marriage of convenience. What's that? Well, there's plenty of foreigners marry girls here just so that they can get their work permit. Oh, of course, they have to pay them for the trouble. Of course, nothing happens and they get a quick divorce. Well, if nothing happens, where does the trouble come in? Well, <laughs> you see, they have to cohabit temporarily, you know. It would be a bit funny, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, fancy having to lie next to a big hairy, snoring, beer-drinking man for a few hundred dollars. Oh, can you imagine it? <laughs> trying not to. Well, look, why don't you advertise? You could put young, handsome, virile male seeks temporary mate. I'm sure Mr. Humphreys doesn't want to contravene the Trades Description Act. <laughs> Leave out handsome. He hasn't got time to put an advert in. I mean, by the time it came out, he'd be off. Well, look, you're always claiming to be hard up, Miss Nichols. Now's your chance to make some money. I'm not that hard up. Oh, I mean, I do it for nothing. You mean you do nothing for nothing? I mean, I would marry Mr. Humphreys tomorrow, except uh, I've got a very jealous boyfriend he just wouldn't understand. Not even if he met Mr. Humphreys. He'd probably understand even less. <laughs> We're all agreed that we've all become very fond of Mr. Humphreys yeah. and we'll all be very sorry to see the back of him. I'll second that. <laughs> so I'm prepared to go through with it and I don't expect any remuneration. I'm just doing it as a favour. Oh, I couldn't let you do that. Oh, well, it's only temporary and I've got a nice big double bed and we could put a bolster down the middle. <laughs> That's a very kind offer, Mrs. Croft. Oh, well, it's the least I could do. <laughs> as long as you don't mind my pussy jumping about during the night. <laughs> You, you see, she sleeps on the bed and she's always dreaming about mice. <laughs> well, it won't be for very long, will it? Oh, no. <laughs> A few months and you'll get your work permit. <laughs> then we can get divorced. Oh, well, I suppose so. Oh, but mind you, you know, you might find that the lifestyle uh, agrees with you. <laughs> Mrs Crawford, I've been a confirmed bachelor for a long time. Oh, come on, one can always change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more confirmed than you think. <laughs> Well, it's either marry Mrs. Crawford or be deported. Well, I know which I'd prefer. <laughs> Mrs. Crawford, I accept your generous offer. Oh, congratulations. Can I be bridesmaid? Oh, of course. <laughs> When's it going to be? Well, we'll get a special permit and then we can have it as soon as possible. Uh, so I'd better go and get a ring. Ah, in fact, I'd better get two rings, wedding and engagement, and then we can announce them both at the same time. Don't you think that jumping into this so quickly might make the rest of the staff think that you're a... Uh, uh, how dare you! How dare you! I don't think that thought will cross anyone's mind. Thank you, Captain Wagstaff. Certainly not anyone who knows Mr. Humphreys. I shall have to get a bridal gown from stock. What about the one that got returned, that you give the credit note for? Had a lovely train. What a good idea. I did like that. Excuse me. Could we just get married in normal clothes? Oh, she wants to look lovely for you. I can just see it now. A stately figure walking down the aisle, all white and virginal. Who's that, her or me? <laughs> it's me. And then the vicar joins us together. Uh, but before he does that, he asks, is there any impediment or reason why these two should not be joined together? Mm, that's when you all keep your mouth shut. <laughs> It's only 148. Where are you going, Mrs. Crawford? To choose the ring. I'll help. Hey. They got some lovely big ones in last week. Oh, have I got to pay for it? Well, they don't rent them. Don't worry, we'll get a discount. <laughs> and if you ever get a divorce, you could get a credit note. What do you mean? If I ever get a divorce. Well, you saw the look in her eye. Once she gets her hands into you, that'll be it. If she gets you down that aisle, it will be all over by the shouting. I've gone off the whole idea. I think it's a bit late for that now. I think I'll just accept my fate and go home. That sort of woman would sue for a breach of promise. Well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I'd like to help you, Mr. Humphreys, and I think I can. So if you'll just sign at the bottom there. I'll sign anything if it'll help. Thank you. <laughs> and there's your receipt. <laughs> What's that for? One morning suit, 38 regular. One grey top at side seven. Oh, it's enormous. We'll see how it catches the light. <laughs> Here they come. Mr. Humphreys, come and see what you've bought her. <laughs> oh. I can't afford that. Oh, it isn't actually real. It's imitation by Le Rock of Paris. But you could never tell, unless she was an expert. It's a bit big, isn't it? Yeah, well, she's got big mitts. 
Who want to be rude, but how much was it? Here's the bill. Are you sure it's not real? Glass <laughs> <laughs> of water for Mr. Humphrey. He's a jolly good fellow, but he's a jolly good fellow, but he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. Hip up! Hooray! Hip up! Hooray! Hip up! Hooray! Thank you all for gathering here. Now, I should like to propose a toast. But before I do, may I say how very glad I am that Mr. Humphreys is going to be able to stay on here with us as soon as he's married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mr. Poe, <laughs> who uh, incidentally doesn't know the real reason, due to the fact that uh, someone's head would roll if he knew that someone had lost the application form and not told him. Yeah, mine were yours. <laughs> Mr. as I was saying, has agreed to allow the wedding ceremony to take place in the boardroom. What an honour. <laughs> Indeed it is. Normally only Mr. Bone gets married in there. But of course, <laughs> this wedding we're going to have a real vicar. <laughs> Mr. Bone has also consented to the use of a record player and an amplifier for a recording of the wedding march or whatever other music the couple may require. Mm -hmm. How about the theme from The Great Escape? <laughs> no, I don't think they'll have that. In that case, I'll settle for who's sorry now. Ah, <laughs> oh, Mr. Bone, just in time for a drink. The nurse will, but I'm late for my disco lesson. I just popped in to wish Mr. Humphreys good luck. Well, thank you, sir. Remember? Marriage is a sacred union between two people. It requires honesty, loyalty, and the greatest respect for one's partner. Yes, sir. Well, that's all. Thank you, sir. Oh, and Mr. Humphrey? Yes, sir. You'll be all right tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to drink now. Well, look at him, and he's not even married. <laughs> he is a gay bachelor. Oh, stop trying to cheer me up. <laughs> and now, toast. The lucky group. The, the lucky group. Just think, there you'll be tonight in the lap of luxury in your honeymoon suite. Just you, your new bride, and your king size bed. I can't go through with it. It's too late now. <laughs> yes? Oh, good. And Mrs. Crawford is going to join us. Yes, it is too late. Well, look, why don't you make her jealous and then she might call the whole thing off? You think that would work? Well, uh, it's worth a try. She's got a very jealous nature. Look, she'll be here in a second. Now, why don't you pop over there and give that nurse a great big smacker on the chops? I couldn't do that. What have you got to lose? <coughs> You're right. It's an emergency. <laughs> I'll shut my eyes and think of England. <laughs> now, I'll count to three. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> that was very naughty, Wilberforce. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that until later, but I'll forgive you. <laughs> Well, if Mr. Humphreys doesn't hurry up, he'll be late. Well, Mrs. Crawford's still getting ready. Well, the bride is always late. Well, I don't think this one will be. Now, look, <laughs> we've got the ring. All we've got to do is toss to find out who's going to be best man. Look, I've got a better idea. Now, look, here are three acts. Whoever gets the best fit gets the job. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Randall. Come on, it's getting late. Mr. Randall, what on earth are you doing in that hat? I'm the best man. I'm the best man. Only senior executive staff are attending the actual ceremony. The rest can wait outside the door. Now, where's the bride? Uh, Mrs. Crawford, are you ready? Yes, I'm just coming. <laughs> Come along, Mr. Humphreys, it's almost time. I'll make sure he doesn't see you again. Here, have another swig. You'll feel better. Ah. <laughs> oh, I do appreciate you letting me sell you that wedding dress. The commission will come in really handy. Oh, think nothing of it. 
and it'll make a nice ball gown for me when we go out dancing. I can't see you now. <laughs> no. oh, it's like trying to get a horse into the stalls for the start. No, oh, it's just nerves. I'm really quite looking forward to it. <laughs> Shall we make our leisurely way up to the boardroom? <laughs> oh, quick, there's the lift. <laughs> Where's the ring? Here it is. Here it is. Oh dear, I do hope it's the right size. Of course it is. Mr. Humphrey's got it from curtain fittings and he got an extra big one. How's it going in there? Just on the last lap. I must say they both look quite radiant. Fancy us not being allowed in. Well, I think the bride requested a very quiet ceremony. I had a very quiet wedding. The rabbi had laryngitis. <laughs> We found the application form. He can get the work permit now. Well, he doesn't have to get married now. Wait, get in there, Mr. No! Crabtree. No, it's the best thing for him and her. She's really set her mind on Miss it. Miss Nichols, out of the way. That is an order. Oh. I hope it's not too late. Well, I hope he is. She's even bought a special nightie and everything. <laughs> well, are you married? Are we, heck? He was just about to say I do when the form arrived. Oh, dear, and he painted the disappointment. No relief. I was just two words away from being Mrs. Humphreys. Oh, never mind, Mrs. Crawford. It wouldn't have worked. And your pussy would never have been the same with me popping in and out all the time. You tell me, Mr. Humphreys. How do you feel after your narrow escape? After my escape, I can sum it up in two words. What are they? I'm free! <laughs> How are you being, sir, sir? I'm hungry, isn't I? How are you being, sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some silly stuff, you've got them plain and spotty. You've also got some see-through that really tan your feet well. Oh, these again, there's plenty around the back. And if you'd like to pick a flat, then try a plastic bag. I'm from Cruz and I'm free. What would you like to see? I'm from Cruz and I'm free. What would you like to see? 